At this point, I am genuinely curious what they have to say on TV to get people to do something. And the people in charge do have to play by a particular set of rules, which does require them to get us to consent to our own fate. Of course, they blur those lines, use deceit and lies to get there, but the point is that the truth is out there for people to accept or more likely be distracted from the thousands and thousands of other lies scrambled in. You know, it's not straightforward like they go up to you and tell you, oh, you're going to join our new world order and live in a box and drive an electric car and fry your brain and become vegan and start kissing other boys. No, they don't do that up front. You know, there, there's a lot of nonsense thrown in. In fact, it's, it's mostly nonsense. And what most people call fear porn is a very popular tactic, you know, saying there will be food shortages, the power grid's going down, there's going to be cataclysmic climate events, then there's the divide and conquer, which probably gets more people pitting people against each other. Democrats versus Republicans, politics being the most fake act. It's completely ridiculous. If someone is making you feel bad, whatever message they're getting across to you, if it's negative, they're not on your side. The question we have today is, you know, are these psychos telling us what they're doing or just what they want to do through any means necessary? Professor Matthew Liao, good morning to you. Good morning. You've suggested that one thing we might be able to do to reduce the, uh, the human footprint on planet Earth is genetically engineer babies to be smaller, thus making them more energy efficient. Explain how that might work. Well, so there are a couple of things that you can do uh, right now already. So there's this technique called uh, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. And what you do there is you can, um, it's, a, it's a technique that's used for um, uh, in, in ver, uh, sort of uh, for fertility clinics. Right, so in IVF treatments and IVF things? IVF treatments, and you can get rid of, uh, you can sort of uh, detect sort of genetic diseases. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that maybe you can use a technique like that to select smaller children. Okay, so yeah. a range of potential options there. You select the genetic material that is bound to lead to smaller children. That's right, that's right. right. But it requires an in vitro fertilizer. That's right. So that would require in vitro uh, fertilization. Another possibility is you can use hormone tr treatments. So these are, uh, we already give hormone treatments to children who are expected to be very, very tall, excessively tall. Oh, okay. Um, and so you can give them. You give these, them hormone treatment in utero now, do we? No, you give them when they're small. Oh, when they're small, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah right. And so it closes the growth plates. With the idea that, <clears throat> excuse me, with, that smaller people would be um, more or have a smaller carbon footprint. Will they consume less? That, that's right. Mm. So other things being equal, larger people consume more energy than smaller people. They also, for example, it takes um, more energy to transport uh, larger people. Uh, they, you need more clothes, uh, mm -hmm. fabric for, to clothe mm -hmm. larger people rather than s smaller people. Mm. Uh, they wear out shoes, carpets, etc., etc., uh, yeah, right. more than smaller people. So think of the, um, the lifetime carbon footprints. That's quite a lot. So, um, and people will think this yeah. is extremely radical. But, you know, you think back to, a, you know, 100 years ago, from, from what we know of, of people then, they were, I mean, humanity was significantly smaller that, even only 100 years ago, wasn't that, it? That's right. That's right. So we might have to stack status quo bias where we think that today we have this optimal height and you know we shouldn't do anything to um, mess up, you know mess with our height but uh, height is much more the trade of height is much more fluid this is so crazy you couldn't make it up you know how crooked is this lunatic's brain screwed on they're already poisoning our food water air restricting our protein consumption through vegan propaganda misleading the average person so that their children become short, ugly, and stupid, perfect little slaves. Now, <laughs> they're, they're trying to make it even worse. They want the sheeple to be a bunch of hobbits while the elite are meat-eating giants. And who's going to have a more enjoyable life? You know, a four-foot-tall mentally disabled person or a six-foot-two supermodel? I mean, it's a stupid question, but that's how the elite people think. For them, the former is just a necessity for them to maintain their power and control over the majority. You know, the standard American diet has deprived us of so much nutrition 
that 99.99%, possibly even higher, of the population does not achieve their growth potential. We're talking skeletal and soft tissue development during prenatal, fetal, early stages of life, all up until their 20s. And to my nutritional knowledge, any male born from any mother can achieve heights well over six foot with proper environmental nutrition. And I used males as an example there because it's more relatable. Uh, but that requires meat, animal protein in the diet. So I'll give two examples. So one is that uh, people eat too much meat, right? And if they were to cut down on their consumption of meat, then they would, uh, it would actually really help the planet. Uh, but people are not willing to give up meat. Yeah, you know, some people will be willing to, but other people, they may be willing to, but they sort of, they have a weakness of will. They say, wow, this, this steak is just too juicy. I can't do it. I, I'm one of those, by the way. So, you know, but so here's the thought, right? So it turns out that we know a lot about, so there, we have these, intolerance to, uh, so I, for example, I have milk intolerance. I'm, uh, and there, some people are intolerant to crayfish. So possibly we can use hu human engineering to make it the case that we're intolerant to certain kinds of meat, to certain kinds of bovine, uh, bovine proteins. And there's actually analogs of this in life. There's this thing called the long star tick, where if it bites you, you will become allergic to meat. Uh, I can sort of describe the mechanism. So that's something that we can do through human engineering. We can kind of uh, ad possibly address really big world problems through human engineering. This psycho is trying to relate to people saying, oh, I love a thick, juicy steak. I mean, how many times do we see that? Like, someone's about to tell you to stop doing something and they're like, oh, Frank, I know how much you like playing with Russian girls, even though I do it myself in my spare time when I'm not getting pounded by my vegan girlfriend, but you're gonna have to give it up. <laughs> These freakazoids are going crazy. I'm still able to talk about how climate change is fake and all of this crap is all made up and lies. They control the weather, which they manipulate with energy technology that the average person does not understand. I don't even understand it. And you know, it's like you have to go down an entire list of lies that everyone accepts as truth. You know, these people in charge, controlling the media, telling us all the knowledge, all the science, have never proven anything. All they've done is repeat their facts over and over again for dozens of years. But where is the actual proof? I feel like I talk about the climate every day now, but that is really their next big agenda to control people and get them to do certain things. One, Man's natural activities don't affect the climate unless you consider geoengineering and chemtrails man's natural activities, which is what I think these secret society sociopaths are actually implying. Two, even if man's natural activities did affect climate change, the narrative they chose doesn't make any sense because CO2 carbon dioxide accounts for less than 1% of the atmosphere, which is entirely water vapor. I think. CO2 is actually 0.04%. You know, it's 99.96% it's water vapor or something crazy like that. And if everything they told us was absolutely true, which it's not, if we took everything they said at face value, eating meat is nothing compared to heavy industrial activities, statistics being heavily skewed. So between all of this wacky daiquiri, the growth plates, and meat allergy, it doesn't make sense to someone that understands this is what they've been doing. You know, are they simply conditioning us to accept it on a larger scale? You know, when people start asking questions 50 years from now about why everyone's half a foot shorter, is it because they banned meat in 2030 to save the planet? I mean, the amount of stuff that's hidden is absolutely insane. You know, how, how autism rates have skyrocketed, how certain brain cancers have skyrocketed, miscarriage rates going through the roof. There's no legitimate statistics being kept on this stuff. You know, if people knew the truth, they would, they would figure out something's going on and it's not right. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so that YouTube does not notify you of my videos. Therefore, you can go to frank stefanocom to support me through all of my businesses. Thanks again for joining me, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow. Oh,